It can be alarming to learn you or a family member have colon polyps. Patients need to know, does this mean they have cancer? Will removing them be painful or require surgery? Let's put colon polyps into perspective and at the end of this video, we'll discuss how they can be prevented. I'm Mark Cooper. I'm a GI doctor, that means I'm a polyp hunter. Polyps may be on the prowl in your colon, and that sounds concerning, but we're going to talk about what that actually means. Patients ask, how would you know if you had polyps? They're usually asymptomatic. They can rarely ulcerate and bleed. They can also cause obstructive symptoms if they're very large, or if they're in the rectum and sizable, they can cause a sense of urgency and frequent bowel movements. But most of the time they're asymptomatic, and so the method to find them is by doing a colonoscopy. Are polyps common? Yes, they are. About half of men and nearly a third of women will have polyps in their lifetime. Most of these occur after the age of 50, and that's the basis for the recommendation that people begin thinking about colonoscopies at the age of 45. The big concern here is do polyps cause cancer? And I think of polyps not as a concern, but an opportunity to prevent cancer, because when we find them early and remove them, then cancer will be prevented. Some polyps have virtually no chance of becoming cancer. These are called hyperplastic polyps and inflammatory polyps. Others are adenomatous, and those do have some potential to become cancer, but that's over the stretch of about a decade. If colon polyps are so common, then why is colon cancer not comparably common? That's because of the long time period that it takes for a colon polyp to turn into a colon cancer. And this highlights the fact that most of these lesions are benign. They don't become a cancer, but removing them is our early opportunity to prevent cancer. What do these colon polyps look like? Some look like mushrooms, we call those pedunculated polyps. Others look like flat earthen mounds, we call those sessile polyps. Some are so flat that they're like a carpet lining the colon. Those can be very hard to see and they underscore the importance of having a very thorough prep to catch them. The most concerning lesions are those that are divoted down and that suggests that the polyp is actually starting to have changes towards becoming a cancer and digging down deeper into the colon tissue. So after we find these polyps, how do we remove them? Very small polyps we can remove with forceps, like a Pac-Man going and chomping the polyp out. Larger polyps we use a snare, it's like a cowboy lasso that lets us get a hold of it and cut it out. As we start to get to larger polyps, we have to use more complicated techniques. And this may require that we even ask you back for a second procedure that can focus solely on getting that polyp out. At times, we have such a large, complicated polyp, we actually need to consider surgery as the best method for its removal. But that is relatively rare. Is removing the polyp painful? Thankfully not. Your colon doesn't have the same sensation as your skin, and so the procedure is not painful, especially because you're under anesthesia. What happens after the polyp is removed? Well, then it's of no more concern to you. It becomes the concern of a pathologist who will look at it under a microscope, and that information will help us to categorize the polyp into those that have potential to become a cancer down the road and those that do not. Can you do something to prevent polyps from forming? Well, you can. There's evidence that people in industrialized countries are more likely to produce polyps than those are not. And while you can't very easily change where you live, you can change how you live. A lot of those risk factors are related to high fat diets, those high in red meat, and so reducing those will reduce your risk for producing polyps. Whereas having a diet high in fiber is protective. People who smoke are at especially high risk for producing polyps, and being overweight, especially obesity, is a big risk factor for producing more polyps. Polyps are like weeds in a garden. Others will grow back. So you may be asked to return for a second colonoscopy sooner if you have the type of polyp that has a risk to become a cancer. If the pathologist tells us that there's particular concerning features, if you have a large polyp or a greater number of polyps, then that date may be set even earlier, three years or even one year if you have a particularly complicated polyp removal. With diet, exercise, and a colonoscopy, you can prevent polyps and remove them long before they become a cancer. I hope you find this information reassuring and it motivates you to stay on top of your colorectal cancer screening and return for the follow-up colonoscopy that's really critical to ensure you reduce the risk of developing colon cancer. For more information on colonoscopy, please see our other videos linked below and subscribe to the channel for more content about colon cancer and its prevention.